Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about criticism. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, how do you prepare your mind to hear continuous critical feedback? Well, uh, if it's code related, I usually try, yeah, I have a sheet, um, that is that I've learned how to detach myself from the code that I write. Uh, in the beginning, uh, it was very difficult to do so. I s and the other type of criticism that I'm still struggling a little bit with is personality-related things, uh, and I'll touch on both. Uh, so for code-related things, as I said, I have a sheet, and that is that I've been working as a software developer for long enough now that I can with... If, I mean, I'm not going to be the world's best coder ever, but I know how to produce software at the levels that you would find software being developed at like larger companies and things like that so i don't really have usually a lot of cause for anxiety for the code that i write unless it's like an interview or something like that, because you know mine goes and you start thinking about oh shit they're gonna look at all of these things and you know you sort of forget because i've done so many interviews now that i kind of go why i should think why am i worried i know how all the companies I've hired for, I know what the candidates look like, like in terms of like how their form is and what they're doing. And you're no worse than that, so why are you scared? Well, because, hey, performance anxieties and so forth. But uh, the trick is basically da it down to that uh, you have to understand what I are you at the very least. I'm not a psychiatrist or anything like that. But uh, the imposter syndrome phenomenon is usually the thing that is the biggest problem for people when it comes to code related criticism. So if you get critical feedback on your code, like someone doesn't like it or so forth, it's usually something that someone with imposter syndrome takes very personally. And the thing I'm trying to tell you is that you have to be able to detach your sense of worth from the code that you have written. This is very difficult if you don't actually believe that you are good at what you do. That's where the problem lies usually. So, as I was saying, for me, that was very difficult in the beginning when I was a junior, because as any junior, you don't really know how good you are. You don't really know. You haven't done anything. So you don't, you have no history with this thing, right? And so the thing that I did was very simply that I practiced and practiced and worked and worked and worked and worked until I was less anxious about it because I've done things so many times that I quote unquote know the right way of doing something. These days I know more than one way of doing a lot of stuff. And so the confidence that comes with the fact that you know that you're good at your craft is the thing that will prepare you for being criticized. Because you're not usually scared if uh, someone is going to you know, not like your code or so forth when you re when you really know what you're doing because usually the feedback you get is like a different way of doing something you already know or they don't like a specific thing you did that is like these tiny little details usually that you can just change. You're not so emotionally attached to it. But when you're a junior or like an imposter syndrome type of person, you you don't you don't have confidence in your own work it's sort of as i like to say it's like an overweight person being very sensitive about their weight the reason they are sensitive is because they are very aware of that they are overweight and so anything that reminds them of that fact is a big no-no and they're sort of in my opinion at the very least it's sort of the same deal here you're sort of you you're 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 not addressing the root issue you're trying to avoid having to deal with it and the thing that you as a weight person need to do is to lose the weight or like to get into shape as is, is the same thing with software developers if you feel like you are not good enough then practice until you are good enough because you're going to be able to get be good enough it's just a matter of do you want to make that investment right the other part that I'm pretty shit at is uh, personal feedback. Things where people don't like uh, my attitude or my way of behaving or something like that, which is a common theme. This, you, you, it's as I said, it's not. I, I mean, I have had feedback, of course, on my coding as well as anybody, and but I feel fairly stable there. This is the thing that usually gets me, because I have uh, a track record of causing issues with this with certain types of people 
and that basically creates a lot of anxiety. I've had a few really bad situations in my career so far where the I, it's it, it's been very punishing for me to try to work towards being you know either improving code or trying to do my best or pushing it and trying to be the best that I can be and so forth and so forth because the reality is that you will always clash with someone if you try to rock a boat someone's going to not someone's not going to like you for it and i have had real issues with this and i still have real issues with whenever i am it's almost like a it's like a pst it was a post traumatic stress syndrome or something someone if someone taps me on the shoulder and says i have some feedback for you that's like my biggest trigger i have some feedback for you frederick when you say that when my manager says this i immediately go oh shit what have i done now because nobody ever gave feedback like that or never, nobody ever said that when you know everything was great right and the fundamental problem that i have or the only tip i can give you is that uh, you should there is a certain type of person and i'm just not that person who can go i don't give a fuck what you think I can do that for certain situations, for certain, like, you you know, for certain people or, you know, some people that I don't really care about and so forth. Absolutely, but not on average, not, uh, you know, when it's people that I care about or where I, if, if, because I have this, I'm one of those people who will, I want to do a good job even when I don't have to, because it's important to me to do the best that I can in every situation. And to me, having some, you know, some, like, whatever I'm doing turn out really poorly is not something that I really like. And especially when it comes back as, you know, negative feedback or things like that, right? So I'm sensitive to it. But the thing I've realized is that I'm just not that sort of person who can just have, say, co-workers or so forth not like me. So what I've found to be more efficient than that is to sort of just accept the fact that I will not be able to work with everybody. I will not be able to make everybody happy. And it's that simple. Because the reality is that usually the people that I clash with are people that I don't really want to compromise on the topics that we clash over. Because usually when I have had these sorts of feedback sessions because they don't like my tone or like the way that I behave or so forth. And that's usually related to that I have an issue with the overall performance of a team or a practice or a process i basically question people people hate being questioned and so when you do that and people feel like that you're like basically in this you're, you're basically questioning everything they do the fundamental problem is that i can either ignore what i see as an issue and just be quiet and that can absolutely work i'm working on that as well or i can say something and the problem is to find that sweet spot uh, and i've found that I have a hard time allow uh, letting things that are not going so well just lie. So in my world, it's always been the case that I've tried to comply, and then the bitterness sort of gets me, and sort of I start feeling uh, resentful, and I start uh, it start it builds up, and I figured out that instead of letting that resentment build up i should simply ad admit to myself that this is an environment where they want to do things in a certain way i don't agree with the way they want to do things i should move if i can't change the environment because i cannot i will won't let this thing that is causing me all this anxiety and uh, this resentment build up to the point where i'm going to have a bunch of feedback me meetings over the fact that I didn't agree with something or I used the wrong tone and so forth because by today's standards guys you should know that it's very common that questioning people even if you mean well isn't it's a big no-no so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, the way that you prepare yourself for critical feedback if it's coding or craft related I suggest that you get to a point where you feel pretty good about your own software skills it's usually very easy to deal with criticisms or feedback or so forth, especially the, the more advanced things get. Uh, at my level, for example, I get questioned on different architectural decisions all the way down to the coding that I do and so forth. And in some cases, you have to sort of admit that you may not know exactly how to do something and then be humble enough to, as I said, detach yourself from the code and say, 
I'm thinking we're gonna go do this thing. I'm not 100% sure if that's gonna work or not, but I have a good feeling about it and be humble enough to sort of say, all right, it could sh turn to shit, but I'm at least admitting that it could turn to shit, so hopefully that mitigates the problem. Because when you can detach yourself from the, uh, from the code, it becomes easier for you to deal with criticism. The other thing that is worth uh, thinking about is personal issues, like you know, people don't like your attitude, or they don't like that you question them, or you don't, they don't like that you get frustrated over things and so forth and so forth. This is one of my, probably my biggest problem, because the reality is that, uh, as I like to tell people, the worst thing, I, you can fuck up a hundred times with around me like if I would like forgive everything and so forth but something that I cannot handle very well is that when I see systematic problems where you're literally you know you have someone who's either incompetent or you have some result that you need to fill like meet and you can't fulfill it and it's not because it can't be done it is because the people who are dealing with this issue are not capable of solving it for reasons it doesn't have to be competence it can be all kinds of things and when you feel like you have no way of fixing the problem. That's when my resentment starts bubbling up. And I usually are, am the sort of person who will say, I think that's a good idea. I don't think that's a good idea. That's very dangerous to have that personality, uh, in, uh, depending on the circumstances, because people will basically start complaining. And so my suggestion to you is that if you're the sort of person who can deal with the fact that people just, you know, don't like you or like your manager like you get you get a tap on the shoulder and you get a feedback session if you can deal with that and sort of say yeah you go fuck yourself type of st style and like you just sh shrug it off go for it my approach has usually been that i've just realized that instead of building up this frustration i'll just say all right if this is the way that it has to work then i will just either shut my mouth or I'll go and do work with people that are more um, like-minded to myself because that usually works out better for me at the very least. Have a great day.